In this video, I'm going to show you how to set up Google Assistant on your Fitbit Sense. Now, I'm going to be using an Android phone. If you're using an iPhone, the steps are slightly different, so I recommend checking out the link in my description below for my Google Assistant setup video on the Versa 3, where I use an iPhone. Otherwise, if you're using Android, let's go ahead and take a look at our apps. So from our clock face, if we swipe to the left, you'll need to find the Voice Assistant app and you can tap on it here and it says set up voice assistant open Fitbit mobile app for more instructions so the interesting thing here is your app on your phone Fitbit app doesn't even have to be in the foreground it does need to be running in the background but if you tap open here on your watch it will actually open the uh, relevant page in the Fitbit app to start setting up Google Assistant which I think is really cool but just in case that didn't work for you or you just want to do it the old school way um, you just have to open your Fitbit app make sure you are on the today tab of your dashboard and tap on the profile picture in the upper left hand corner then tap on sync or versa 3 whichever one you're using and then tap on voice assistant so that'll bring you to that same page so we're going to set up Google assistant in this video so let's go ahead and tap connect your Google account so get a little help on your wrist. Sense is all you need to get things done with your voice. Ask Google to start an exercise, manage your day, get answers, and more. To continue, you'll need to complete activation through the Google Assistant app on your phone. So let's go ahead and tap Activate Google Assistant. And it says it's connecting. connected all right activate Google assistant on your sense use your voice to track workouts and more you can deactivate your assistant at any time in settings so I'll go ahead and tap on activate and it says get personal results allow Google assistant to give results specific to you on this sense like your calendar and reminders this also allows information from your connected health and fitness device and services you can turn off personal results in Google Assistant settings. So you can tap to learn more. You can tap no thanks if you don't want personal results. Or you can do it like I'm doing and go ahead and tap turn on. And it says your assistant is ready. Just press and hold the left button to talk to Google. If you've already set up a left button shortcut, you can change it in your sense settings. Try saying things like start a run, set a timer for 30 minutes, or how did I sleep last night? So I'll go ahead and tap on done. Voice assistant is all set. Wake your Google assistant and try it out. So I'll go ahead and tap close. And here it says Google assistant is active. If we tap on it again, you can also turn off Google assistant here if you ever want to. So I'll go ahead and go back. And then now on your device, if you wake it up and swipe to the left, You'll have to swipe all the way to the end. And there we go. We have the Google Assistant app. If you actually want to move that closer to your clock face, you can just press and hold and then drag. And then you can place that closer. So now if you go from your clock face, you only have to do one swipe. So that is up to you. And just to show you, there we go. It is active. And you can also customize your shortcuts. So if you tap on settings, if you scroll all the way down to shortcuts and tap on it, you can set Google Assistant as your press and hold shortcut or your double press set of shortcuts. So first, if you press and hold the left button, you can open up an app or feature quickly. So if you want to set that to Google Assistant, you would make sure this is on. If it is off, you just tap to turn it on. And then here right now it says I have no um, shortcut for the press and hold, so I'll tap on it. And then I'll scroll until I find Voice Assistant, Google Assistant, so I'll tap on that. And then I'll go back, and now it says Press and Hold is Google Assistant. Otherwise, you could have your double pressing the left button can open four custom shortcuts or apps. So if that's not on, you can just tap it to turn it on. And then you can choose top left, top right, bottom left, or bottom right. 
Right now, bottom left is set to a Google Assistant. So let's say I wanted to change that. I would just tap here. Say I'll switch that to settings. So now bottom left is settings. And now I can say bottom right instead of Fitbit Pay. Maybe I want Voice Assistant, Google Assistant. So now if I swipe back, it says bottom right is Google Assistant. So I can swipe back again and swipe back again and swipe back again. So now you're on the clock face. So the three ways to access your Google Assistant is either swiping to reveal the apps and find it in your list of apps, swiping another time if you need to. You can also double press the button. And there we go. That's on the side. Then you need to tap to activate. And then if you long press, you actually don't have to tap anything. So I'm just going to long press. Start a hike. And there we go. So it can actually start a workout for you, which I think is great. Unfortunately, it didn't start a hike. It just started a general workout. So that's actually not so great. Uh, let's see if it can stop a workout. Stop my workout. And there we go. So that's something that Amazon Alexa actually can't currently do is stop a workout. So that's nice. But Amazon Alexa can actually start a hike, not just a general workout. So you kind of have to pick which one is more important to you, I guess. It can start a run probably. Let's try that. Start a walk. Okay, so it did start a walk. You can also start a run. You can figure out if you can start your preferred exercise. Let's see if I can stop it again. Stop exercise. All right, so that is working. That's great. So another thing that you might want to do is set timers. Timer, five minutes. And there we go. So it started a timer. And it looked like, unlike Alexa, this actually does use the Fitbit timer app. So if I go back, in order to access that timer, let me see if I go to the Fitbit timer app. And yeah, so that is integrated with the Fitbit timer app. That is nice to know. I can actually pause and interact and stop with this timer without having to use Google Assistant. But let's say I wanted to keep it going and stop it with Google Assistant. I would go here. Cancel last timer. All right. So it says it's canceled. I think that just shows you, you could also say stop timer. Let me go double check. I go back to get out of the Google Assistant app. Now I can swipe to find my timer app. And now I don't have any timer set. So one thing you'll notice, there are no audible replies, at least as of mid-January 2021. There are no audible replies for Google Assistant. There are for Amazon Alexa, if you're using a Sense or a Versa 3. I do believe audible replies are coming to Google Assistant on the Sense of Versa 3 at some point, but who knows when, only Fitbit at this point. So that's an introduction to setting up Google Assistant on your Fitbit Sense with an Android phone. I'll probably do another video showing you more things you can use with Google Assistant, other commands and whatnot. So if that video is available, I'll link it up on the screen here, or you can check it out in the description below. Otherwise, I hope you found this video helpful. Thanks so much for watching, and I'll see you in my next video.